Hi everyone, I'm Allison Smith. We are so happy to have you here with us from the EnergyCast studios in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Let's take a look at October's top stories. A Tennessee's nuclear workforce is about to get a boost. Tennessee Tech is rolling out the state's second nuclear engineering program. School leaders will explain how it will help power up the next generation of talent in the industry. And check it out, you're looking at what will soon be the first ever test bed in Oak Ridge. We take you inside the new technology development facility, where researchers will test cutting edge technologies to help support future cleanup projects. And a grant from the Department of Energy is revitalizing a historic property in the Scarborough community. Discover the plans to restore the Atomic Elks Lodge to its former glory, and why local leaders believe it will improve the neighborhood's quality of life. And our big story this month, we're headed back to college. A Tennessee Tech University launched a new nuclear engineering program that's expected to help Oak Ridge in a big way in the years ahead. Sierra Hellemans has more. Over the last two decades, there's been a growing demand for solutions to meet the country's increasing energy needs. Nuclear energy has the capability to do just that. And now, attention is turning back to the industry. However, OREM manager Jay Mullis says education and training within the state needs to catch up to this renewed interest. We realize that there's such a need right now for the nuclear renaissance that's occurring in East Tennessee and broadly in Tennessee writ large, that there was a need for a lot of nuclear engineers. Tennessee Tech University has stepped up to help increase the number available in the state. If we can keep folks in state, we want to do that. And so UCOR uh, has been working uh, very closely over the past year, putting quite a bit of effort into helping uh, Tennessee Tech establish that program as a feeder for all the nuclear work that's now taking place in uh, East Tennessee. This August, Tennessee Tech introduced its new degree in nuclear engineering, with 20 students enrolled in the inaugural class. Projections estimate that the program will increase the number of nuclear engineer graduates in Tennessee by 25 to 30 percent by its fifth year. A change that UCOR's president and CEO, Ken Reuter, says wouldn't have been possible without collaboration. Very similar to what we have done at other university partners, we provided subject matter experts to help, you know, pursue what would the curriculum look like, how would it best fit our industry, how does it line up with the greater needs of the state of Tennessee. Tennessee Tech President Phil Oldham tells us how the degree is targeted towards student and industry needs. Looking at the overall needs in the industry in particular, there did appear to be some niches that were a good fit for Tennessee Tech that, that, that were not uh, duplicative of UT or what Roan State's doing. And so that's what we're trying to do. Uh, particularly in areas of uh, fuel processing and the fuel cycle issues and things in that regard. We surveyed students. Uh, they're very interested in pursuing this pathway and we have the capabilities of doing it. The new program helps provide greater accessibility to students across the state interested in entering the nuclear industry. Mollis also mentioned career-oriented fellowship opportunities available to students entering the field. We, OREM, many years ago established a fellowship program with ORAU, uh, and we have gotten nuclear engineers uh, that were trained at UT through that program that we currently employ that were interns or fellows uh, that we subsequently hired, and the plan would be to use those to feed things like criticality safety specialists, uh, project uh, engineers and project managers for our cleanup projects and also nuclear safety specialists. There are also early discussions about the university offering special certificates related to deactivation and demolition. To learn more about Tennessee Tech's new nuclear engineering degree program, head over to tntech.edu slash engineering slash programs slash NE. This month, Tennessee Tech celebrated an important milestone, the grand opening of the Ashraf Islam Engineering Building. The 100,000 square foot building is the university's first new engineering building in 50 years. Inside the impressive three-story structure are instructional labs and classrooms. 
During the celebration, students expressed their excitement about this new space and the opportunities it will provide. The new building will really allow us to collaborate um, in these really big open spaces and bounce ideas off each other to build the best possible things that we can build. I'm really excited for all the collaboration rooms as well as the overall architecture of the building. I think that it's very attractive for incoming students to look at Tennessee Tech and see that it's a really great option with modern technology that can accommodate industrial needs for external companies. As sticking with education, let's introduce the new Nuclear Engineering Department head at the University of Tennessee. Brian Wirth is stepping into the role with more than a decade of experience at UT. Wirth studies nuclear energy environments and materials, and his research has received national recognition. Wirth replaces Wes Hines, who retired after 13 years leading the department and 29 years with the university. We wanted to take a moment to spotlight relief efforts after Hurricane Helene devastated East Tennessee communities. In Oak Ridge, Teamsters with the local union sprang into action, mobilizing resources to help those affected. With generous donations from across the region, they filled a trailer with essential supplies. Our cameras were there to capture this heartwarming effort. I've always been taught that we should always help anytime we get an opportunity to. We were watching the news and we saw it down in Florida and coming up through the Gulf and never envisioned what would be headed towards Tennessee. And, and whenever it started hitting, it's like, man, this is bad. And so it just kept getting progressively worse. Then we kept hearing horror stories of flooding and things of that. And then I could start getting concerned. My mother-in-law, Barbara, and my father-in-law, Gary, both live in Newport. We have a lot of friends and family. I once myself lived in Newport. As this event carried on, I got to hear real stories about what was really happening and the loss that was there, uh, the devastation. The Teamsters started thinking, okay, what can we do? What can we do to help? And we started networking within our organization and said, hey, we need to get help up there to the, one, our members, and then to the community. We were able to get a first trailer. We brought it over here on Sunday. The response was unreal. We know then that we need the second trailer. We reached out to them again, no problem whatsoever. They are gonna work it out to where they basically are donating our time, the fuel, and the equipment to get it up there on Friday. The most important part is we're helping people. And, and the community and the outreach, I, we can't say enough about it and what they've done and what they're doing to help people. UCOR is definitely one of our, our largest also that we have been very involved in and they have been great to work with and get this to where it needs to be as far as donations. Uh, DOE, I can't say enough about it, the training and safety and training that I do, we work directly with DOE. So it's just a, it's just been a very good relationship, a hand-in-hand -hand relationship to get this huge accomplishment done. At the time of need, we come together. That's the volunteer spirit. That's what Tennesseans are made of. We've got an update from the EM Site Specific Advisory Board. Here's all that info in one hot minute. Oak Ridge recently hosted the Fall 2024 Chairs Meeting that brought together board members and federal staff from EM Sites across the country. They had the opportunity to tour the Oak Ridge Reservation, making stops at ORNL, Y-12, and the East Tennessee Technology Park. During the meeting, participants shared their site's successes challenges and recommendations concerning cleanup activities. EM senior management provided updates and answered questions. They stress the importance of public input and EM cleanup decisions. They've provided almost 1,800 recommendations since their inception 30 years ago. And the acceptance or partial acceptance of those recommendations is around 80%. The advisory board program is such an important part of our EM's public participation program. 
and always making sure that uh, we're engaging the folks that are interested right now, but also the next generation about what has happened in the past, what's happened now, and how they can be part of our future moving forward. The three-day event ended with a training on transportation emergency planning and preparedness. In our top project update this month, demolition is underway on the Alpha 2 complex. This milestone was a top priority for EM, and it signifies a new phase of cleanup. The project marks the first demolition of a former uranium enrichment building at the Y-12 National Security Complex. Crews began by tearing down one of the ancillary facilities, and next they will transition to the main structure. The 325,000 square foot Manhattan Project era facility spans nearly two and a half acres at the National Security site. We'll have much more on that project in the coming months. And move over, we have some big equipment coming through. Construction on the mercury treatment facility took another major step forward at Y12. Workers installed all three large sludge settling tanks needed at the facility. Each tank measures 38 feet tall, 15 feet wide, and has a 36,000 gallon capacity. The latest installation highlights the progress happening on the critical infrastructure project. When operational, the facility will allow EM to begin demolition on mercury contaminated buildings at Y12 and help prevent mercury from releasing into the environment. It's designed to treat up to 3,000 gallons of water per minute and collect stormwater in a 2 million gallon storage tank. OREM has a path forward to treat and dispose more than 100 drums of unique transuranic waste. That work is already underway. Oak Ridge becomes one of the first sites in the nation to develop a treatment process for transuranic waste that includes plant-based material. Without proper treatment, this waste presents a danger because it can combust if certain chemical reactions occur. One of those reactions did occur at the Waste Isolation Pilot Plant in New Mexico in 2014. That event changed how waste is processed before it's accepted at the disposal site. Future Research now has a home. Construction is ramping up on EM's first ever technology development facility in Oak Ridge. The new facility will be a game changer for advancing technologies used in cleaning up contaminated areas. We got an exclusive look at what's in store. Oak Ridge is close to opening its first ever test bed facility. The technology demonstration facility will allow researchers to test new tools and innovations locally instead of sending them off site. We are trying to create a facility where we can do technology demonstrations on site so that we're not having to ship hazardous material across state lines and have to work with other agencies who may not have those resources available to them. This way we have a facility here on site that they can come do their experiments at that can help us with future cleanup work at the reservation. The goal? To create a space for real world testing and innovation, starting with technologies that support future mercury cleanup at Y12. If we can learn how to mitigate mercury, control mercury, deal with mercury in the soils, those type of things, that's going to be a big boon and a win for us in the field. And so we want to test them here so we can easily bring them to the site and bring them into Y12 and actually use them for our crews and um, our, uh, our production. The facility will also include lab spaces and offices for researchers to run demonstrations and fine tune their work. They're especially excited to support robotics demonstrations while enhancing EM missions. We also have robots that can work independently. They can go around with cameras or radiation detectors. There's a spot dog robot that can go in areas where people haven't been, take pictures, and then come back and we can assess, oh, these are the protective things we need uh, to go into that area with real people. It's been a long process, but the team is thrilled to have a dedicated testing space ready when the technology is. So in order to bring a technology development to the workforce, it takes years. So um, just to dream it up, to think it up, to work through the TRL process, to get the funding, all of that takes time. The last thing we want to do is when it is ready to test, not have a location to test. So the fact that we have a location, that we can ease that part of it, that once it's ready to test, we can test it here, we can vet it through our safety protocols, and then we can make it accessible for our workforce. That's a real win for UCOR, it's a real win for OREM. 
construction should wrap up in early 2025, and operations will get underway early summer of that year. A Kairos Power is making major strides in Oak Ridge. Construction on the Hermes One reactor at the East Tennessee Technology Park is underway. Now the company is gearing up for its Hermes Two project, moving one step closer to a construction permit. In record time, the National Regulatory Commission found no significant environmental impacts from the proposed test reactor facility. The agency also exempted Hermes Two from the need for a full environmental impact statement saying the previous assessment for Hermes 1 was enough. Still, they took a close look at any unique aspects of Hermes 2 to ensure there'd be no new concerns. We recently spoke with Kairos leadership about what's next for the company in Oak Ridge. We like to see our technology move forward and be demonstrated here. Um, that's a really big part of what we're trying to do. Um, the Hermes uh, technology is really a demonstration reactor, so we need to commercialize and deploy at a commercial scale. And we really view the hub here at Oak Ridge being able to enable that commercialization. So this is the start of our nuclear builds and we see it expanding from here. Akiros applied for the Hermes 2 construction permit in July 2023. The company will need to submit a separate application for the operating licenses in the future. We have some exciting news about a breakthrough cancer treatment with ties right here to Oak Ridge. Terra Power is now producing a rare isotope at a commercial scale. That means more access to promising treatments. Drug developers are already using it in human clinical trials for targeted cancer therapies. We have been following this story closely since TerraPower partnered with cleanup contractor Isotec to extract medical isotopes from uranium-233 stored at ORNL. That partnership is helping supply the actinium-225 needed for trials focused on treating diseases like prostate, breast, and colon cancer. The company says actinium-225 based drugs have the potential to destroy cancerous tissues with minimal damage to nearby healthy cells. It is truly powerful for, for this community because it represents the first economic development um, funding to brought, be brought into the Scarborough community since the Manhattan Project. This month, we are shining a light on Oak Ridge's Scarborough community. The Department of Energy awarded a $1.9 million grant to renovate and expand the historic Atomic Elks Lodge. We found out why this funding could jumpstart reinvestment and bring new energy to this historically black neighborhood. A Manhattan Project era building still stands tall as a cornerstone of the historic Scarborough community, the Atomic Elks Lodge. Nearly 75 years after receiving its charter, the lodge is getting a new lease on life, thanks to a $1.9 million grant from the Department of Energy. The grant is part of a broader effort to boost reinvestment in underserved communities near cleanup sites. I feel good about it because that's something we've been trying to do for the longest and we've limited on what we can do. The grant will help restore the lodge to its original role as a hub for community engagement with a focus on education, economic development and health care. I grew up in this community and I remember when this was a hustling, bustling community with so many opportunities and to see that, that we have an opportunity to have this grant I feel richly fulfilled. There are already plans in motion to add youth programs, job training, and even a medical clinic. For Rose Weaver, known as Scarborough's historian, this investment is about much more than a building. It's about giving the community a path to its full potential. We have so many young people who are distraught because they don't know what they want to do. Wouldn't it be amazing for you to walk down the street to go to a training program and say within six or eight months, you would have the job that you thought you would never be able to have. Oak Ridge City Council member Derek Hammond believes the grant has a bigger purpose too, inspiring further revitalization efforts. When people begin to see those kinds of investments, 
uh, they start to ask why. And when they ask why, then that gives the opportunity for us to tell our story. And so we continue and expect this investment as the previous ones uh, to continue enabling us to tell our story, which is worthy of investment. So what's next? The Oak Ridge Housing Authority, which helps secure the grant, is now working with the lodge to hire an architect and turn this vision into a reality. We've got more from this story on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe to our channel for more exclusive stories. And we've got some big stories planned for you next month. We talk with top industry leaders coming to town for the Atiba Business Opportunities and Technical Conference. We'll have that and much more. You will not want to miss it. And remember, if you work in environmental management in Oak Ridge, keep us in mind if you come across a story. We're always looking for news tips and story ideas from across the reservation. We'd love to feature what matters to you right here. Email your idea to oakridgeem at orem.doe.gov. And don't forget to follow us on our social media accounts. We post this show on our YouTube channel. Plus, if you liked a topic we covered here, we often have more on it over there. You can also follow EM News on our Facebook, Instagram, and X accounts. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you a bit earlier next month due to Thanksgiving. Our next episode will be on November 20th. You can watch on air or online, same places as always. We'll see you next month from the EnergyCast studio in Oak Ridge.